Hello again, I'm Sean with Backful Supply out of Salt Lake City, Utah. Today I want to talk to you about uh, getting ready to turn your sprinkler system on for the spring and specifically making sure your backflow assembly is ready to go and some things to look for, some winter damage that may have occurred. Hopefully everything went well for you, but uh, oftentimes that's not the case. Um, so some things to look for when you're getting ready to turn this on, you get your sprinkler system all taken care of and then go to your backflow assembly and take a look at it. The first thing you want to do is visually inspect the outside of it. Look for any type of cracks that may have happened uh, over the winter and that can be on the ball valves or the main body itself. For example, here's a ball valve that did not make it through a winter and you see that crack there and that crack can be anywhere around the body of this assembly. Sometimes, especially here on the bottom, you'll need to feel for that to try and find it. Now, people will ask me, well, how do I prevent that from freezing and breaking? And what you want to do is you want to turn this ball valve when you're done in the fall to a 45 degree angle. And that's the best you can do if you're going to leave your backflow assembly in for the winter to try and prevent that from freezing and breaking. So check the ball valves to see if those are freeze, froze and broke or cracked. And then also check the body of the assembly. This is off of a, an Apollo DC-4A and you can see that that body has got a good crack going in it and that just has to be replaced. Some of the cracks you can't see from the outside like uh, this is out of a Wilkins 375. This normally has brass ball valves on both ends and either brass or aluminum supports that run along the side of it to each ball valve to hold it in place. This one's already been stripped down but um, you couldn't see the cracks from the outside and sometimes there's so much calcium build up around the outside of it you wonder well is that where it's leaking from or not usually it's not and it's oftentimes easier to find the crack um, with everything removed now right down the center line about six o'clock right down into the center of the relief valve i'll see if i can get enough light on this for you to see uh, right there you should be able to see it uh, right down the center line going down into this ho blacker hole right there in the center the crack so when they turned the system on it started to leak out of the relief valve and it's because this was cracked and the o-rings inside weren't sealing now this is the same thing this is the whole unit as it came out uh, this one had not been in for very long there's no calcium build up or scale on the outside but it did freeze and break and I don't know if you can see this very well or not but right here going back to the relief valve cover is a crack let's see if I can put a little more light on that there you go you can see a jagged crack there so this one they could look at and tell that it was cracked from the outside and all you can do is just replace that uh, body. Now you can buy it complete like this or you can buy just the shell and replace the parts inside. It's up to you. Some other things to look for. Uh, the covers on several of the models have a cover that's flat like this. This is on a double check so there is no relief valve and unless the cover was taken off and the water removed most likely the water right underneath this cover has been uh, just stuck there for the winter and it'll cause the water to freeze and it'll bow the cover and when I say bow it just goes up a little bit and sometimes the o-ring that seals this cover to the brass body that goes around here gets pushed out the side and so that's something you can visually see other times it's so severe that around the test cock the brass has been pushed up and you'll see it cracked other times you just don't have an indication other than water's spraying out the side the o-ring is not the issue it's the cover now also along those lines this Apollo RP4A is the only one that I can think of and that I'm aware of since it came out this cover gets bowed a lot it's the same thing it's got the body here and it's it's bolted to it and it just bows and the reason for that is again somebody may have came through and winterized it or opened up the test cock and drained the water out but unless the cover was removed, this 
kind of has a brass wall there, there's water that's stuck between that wall and the cover and there's nowhere for it to go. And so it causes that, that relief valve cover to bow. Now I've had 100% success taking this cover off and putting it on my vise. My vise is nothing special. It's the same thing that many homeowners have in their shop. And behind the vise is just a flat piece of metal that's just a little bit bigger than this. And I lay it down on that and I pound the edges. I do not pound this and I do not pound this, but I just pound around the edges and I'll get down and I'll look to see if I can see light underneath that and, and the vise and I'll pound it until there's no light. And I've had 100% success pounding those flat or you can replace the cover if you like. The other issue with that RP4A and because of that wall, if there's still water trapped in there, this is this relief valve assembly here, it's sitting in there and there's nowhere for it to go. And so the water expands and what it does is it snaps this stem. There's a stem that runs underneath everything there. Um, so the red gasket here gets attached here and this plate gets attached here and this bushing will ride on an o-ring that goes right here. So what happens is that right where this o-ring goes is where that tends to snap. Again, you can replace the stem only, or you can replace this whole relief valve assembly. Another thing to look for is on the ones that have a Y design. Um, so one check points up and one points down is that if it was not, if this cover on this downward check did not have the cover removed, all the water got built up in here and it can freeze and break the poppet assembly that's inside. Now as I'm unthreading this, it's tight and then loose. That's an indication that the body has warped in some instances. Other instances it's just the o-ring that's getting bound up in it. But it can snap this, this poppet. This should be one solid piece and oftentimes this end piece will slide up and down on the shaft and that's not supposed to happen. But what I want to show you, if I can do that, um, as I'm showing this to you, get some light in there. About six o'clock, just after six o'clock, there is a crack that's in the seat. I uh, don't know if I can get just enough light in there. If you can look in there, right about six o'clock, just after six, uh, on the position of a clock you'll see the little tiny crack and that crack is going, let me get this cut away here, that crack is going this direction across the seat, just straight down through it. Sometimes it'll crack around the circumference of the seat, but most often it'll crack down this way and you can see those from the top as you're looking down in there. Now also on this, this assembly that I was showing you, um, I want you to see Another example of brass expanding, but it doesn't show through to the outside. How do I get that? Okay, right at the six o'clock point, you can see that expanded crack right at six o'clock in the brass. It's not a very good picture of it. Kind of have the flashlight in the way, but that just expanded it and cracked, but it did not go through to the outside. That's just normal casting there. So you have to, to look into the uh, causes of the leaking. And on that particular one I was just showing you, that happened in both checks. So take a look at that. Um, and those are just some of the things to look for. These are some of the more common issues. And all you can do is investigate it a little bit. If you have questions, feel free to call me. Uh, put suggestions down below, things that you want me to show you. And if there's some backflows that are being turned on here in the upcoming weeks, uh, let me know and I'll, maybe I can be there and film it as it's going on to get some better examples to show you. I hope that as you find that you need some backflow supplies that you'll think of backflow supply out of Salt Lake City, Utah. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I hope it's been helpful. Have a good day.